Okay. So we're looking at Paul and Timothy and uh, the, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the spiritual fathering, the spiritual mentoring that happened. Um, so just looking at uh, some of the things that Paul wrote to Timothy and you know, from that we understand in all these epistles we understand how it was um, in what way he um, uh, he ministered in what way he he brought up he built up uh, Timothy we see that uh, you know right from a place of uh, uh, you know in Acts chapter 16 when we read that okay uh, Paul goes to Lystra Derby he finds Timothy and from that place on he reaches a Timothy grows spiritually matures to come to a place of leadership right so Paul can actually trust him uh, to go where he himself cannot go or you know he can really trust Timothy to go on his behalf to to minister at that level you know where he says here is Timothy my fellow minister right so to even to that extent right timothy has grown under what uh, under the you know ministry under the teaching under the mentorship of paul so we see that it's it's a good method right, for us to follow it's a good it's a good thing to put in place in our own li lives if we are raising up leaders right okay so let me just share the notes and uh, Okay. Okay. So we saw uh, the last thing that we saw was that uh, um, Paul was, uh, you know, encouraging, exhorting, and even, uh, you know, bringing across correction um, to Timothy. He pointed out certain things that Timothy needed to change about his own life, right? And uh, he also. Uh, he, he tells Timothy, okay, you need to, this is how you need to, you know, you need to honor the people. Uh, like in, I think we see that in uh, 2 Timothy verse 5, um, honor widows who are really widows. Then in verse 1, he says, do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him. Um, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters with all purity. So you know, he's just setting the standards, you know, in, in his communication uh, with Timothy. Okay, so um, so we see that correction, you know, in particular, if we do not correct those whom we are spiritually, uh, you know, growing from immaturity to maturity, then it will it'll be a problem, right? Because uh, not only is it going to affect them, you know, just because we felt hesitant to correct, thinking, you know, what will that person say, or how will that, you know, how will this affect our relationship? You know, when we did not correct, when we do not correct, it becomes a bigger problem. It becomes, it keeps growing, and it becomes a bigger problem, right? So we need to uh, understand that. And uh, God will give the wisdom. The Lord will give the wisdom to correct in the right manner, and to correct in a manner that's, uh, you know, just like the uh, uh, the Lord would, you know, bring in correction. He would chastise in the sense, uh, you know, uh, the one uh, there's there is a loving correction to those uh, who are his who we consider to be sons and daughters, you know. The, otherwise, the Bible says, you know, then you are illegitimate, right? If I don't correct, if I, if I don't bring in correction, then how can, uh, you know, without that, how can you be called sons and daughters? So uh, definitely God would correct us. God God does correct us. But it is, it's not to break us, right? It is not to destroy us, the correction that he brings. It's redemptive in nature. Right? It is always for us to, uh, for for us to be brought back to that place where we had fallen. You know, if that is the case, it's always uh, an act which restores us. It's always an act which strengthens us, and enables us to go far beyond, you know, from beyond the mistake. Right, go beyond the mistake, and that's the grace of God. 
So we see that, uh, you know, as God corrects us, we also need to correct. Now, some of us temperamentally, like personality-wise, um, we are not that kind of people who would bring in correction. You know, even if we notice something is wrong, we'll just say, okay, I don't want to do that. Or, or let me just keep quiet. Right? It's okay. It's not my business. Uh, let me just keep quiet. Well, it is, you know, if God has entrusted someone uh, for you to minister to, then it is your business to bring in the correction as well, to speak the truth in love, right? as scripture mandates, that we would speak the truth in love. That is the instruction in scripture, right? And we would do it in an honorable manner. Okay. Okay. Then the, the next thing that we see is that uh, there was also, you know, communication of genuine costs. In the sense, Paul did not tell Timothy, hey, Timothy, you join, come with me on this ministry trip. It'll be fantastic. It'll be great. It'll be all, you know, comfortable. Uh, you know, we'll get to see some nice places. Uh, excuse me. You know, he didn't say, okay, we'll get to see all these nice places. We'll get to see, um, travel to these places and it'll all be fun. No. He actually, you know, communicated to him. He told him that, um, uh, you know, come, you need to share in my suffering. Like, there are things are difficult. <clears throat> um, Things are to an extremely hard. And so he did not <clears throat> uh, hold back from sharing, from being real, from being very real. Oh, this is how it is. Right? Um, <clears throat> if, if you look at Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8, right? chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Let's share with me what in the sufferings, right? According, uh, so, so in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Well, the power of God is at work in us, the resurrection power is at work in us, and that is, and it is He who empowers us to go and do the work to carry out uh, the work of the God. Uh, ministry of the gospel, sharing the gospel, but there is suffering involved in it, but you share with me in the sufferings, you know, as much as you are, you know, you are traveling and you're doing this, share with me in this also, right, um, according to the will of God. Okay, so that is something that we see, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, uh, chapter 2 also, verses 3 to 5. Um, he talks about how, you know, he's telling Timothy, Timothy, you must endure, right? You must endure what? Hardship. So he's saying, uh, Timothy, I know that you are, you are in ministry, but you must have this capacity to go through suffering and you must endure it. Right? You must endure. You must go through it. Uh, there's no other way out. So he's, he's being very frank, very real. He's not saying, hey, no, this is this is not, uh, it won't happen to you. Uh, you. You have to go through it, he says. You have to endure it. Right? Uh, you have to, uh, you know, you have to persevere. So he says, uh, um, if you look at that verse, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, just like how an army, our soldier would go through hardships, you must endure hardships. Verse 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Um, and so on. So, and then, you know, even in chapter, I'm sorry, verse 6, he says, the hard-working farmer. He's talking about a different thing. It must be first to partake of the crops, but um, he's saying, you know, you see that quality of, you know, being hard-working, the quality of, uh, you know, being trained, being disciplined, just like an athlete who would compete uh, to be trained, and then also as, an, uh, as a soldier in an army, right, to be... Um, to be, uh, to not to entangle with, get entangled with the, with the, with the things of daily life, but to to keep that in mind, 
that you are a soldier, that you are in the army of God, and you need to be alert, and you need to be, you need to be prepared all the time, right? So he's talking about hardship, and and um, and he's saying, you know, that is something that you cannot avoid. So he's communicating uh, or sharing with him the genuine. He's being very real with him. Uh, the genuine things. It's this is real. This is a part of ministry. This is part of life, uh, and he's not holding back. Okay, his communication with Timothy was with regard. What does that mean? That means that with respect and honor. Okay, uh, he calls him. Uh, you know, like he called him, my beloved son. He also calls him, you, O man of God. First Timothy six. Verse eleven, but you, O man of God, um, right? So he um, uh, he says, you know, but you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. So he's talking about uh, how others, you know, those who who are desiring to be rich, um, and how. For them, the love of money became a root of all kinds of evil, and they strayed from their faith in their greed for money, and and as a, as a result of which, you know, they have they have pierced themselves in the sense they have opened their lives for all kinds of sorrows, and you know, their lives is their life is a mess. So he's saying, you know, he's warning Timothy, and he's saying, but you, O oh man of God, so that word, that phrase, man of God, so he's recognizing him. As a minister of God, he's recognizing him as a as a man of God. Right? So we see that there is so much of respect. He's, he's not like, okay, I know Timothy. I know since he was a small boy, it is I. It, it, it was me who actually brought him up. I only brought him up. I only picked him up and and you know uh, gave him a place to come with me on my travels. So I'll call him whatever I want. You know. No, he's saying, you, Timothy, O man of God. So he's recognizing the call of God on his life. He's recognizing that Timothy is now mature. He's grown up. And uh, and and so even in, in his communication, in, and when he addresses um, Timothy, he says, you, O man of God. Right In uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. Right, Philemon 1. Verse one, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother. Right, so a man of God he calls him his brother, and he had utmost you know, respect and uh, um, an honor for Timothy. Even though, well, Timothy was was a believer; he was just doing his thing. He found him, he took him, he uh, trained him. And uh, ministered alongside. Now Timothy is is a minister by himself, taking care of the ministry in Ephesus, and uh, and Paul is addressing him for who he is, a man of God, right? So we see that uh, okay, just because we are mentoring someone, just because we are, you know, sp uh, we are being a spiritual father or a mother to someone, uh, someone we we just cannot. Continue to, you know, treat them, uh, you know, with that familiarity. In the sense, okay, I'll always call that person by the nickname. You know, uh, you know, the, the thing is, I mean, it's it's not the name that you they call the person, but but really the, uh, you know, what is it? What is your motive, right? Uh, are, are you recognizing the fact that that person has grown and is, uh, you know, giving the respect and honor for that person, for who? He or she has become in Christ, right? Uh, or do you want to just put that person down and and you want to tell everyone that you know, how big you are and how good you are in relation to that other? Because this this you know this letter was written, I mean, um, for the church and it was read by even though it was to for Timothy, I'm sure it was read by others, right? Um, others as well. 
uh, in uh, and the church because there's so many so much of instruction and revelation and truth here um, so others would be benefited so the, these letters copies of it would go around to the surrounding area so uh, so everyone would read about it right so so paul wasn't like saying okay timothy is a small boy you know he's known to me no timothy oh man of god okay right and then we see that uh, he also delegated Timothy and commissioned him. Okay. In First Timothy chapter one verse three, you see, and uh, um, was it uh, one three? Yeah. I thank God whom I serve with a. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm reading chapter two. Okay. So he says, as I urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So there came a time, yes, Timothy was traveling alongside Paul. He was uh, ministering alongside Paul. Wherever Paul went, Timothy went. Wherever Paul ministered, Timothy also ministered. Timothy also learned many things. But here, uh, you know, here comes a time when uh, Paul saw certain a level of maturity a level of understanding timothy has grown so he decides to delegate that responsibility of ministry in that area to timothy okay so he kind of gave that responsibility to timothy and uh, he he left uh timothy over there and he said okay he this will you know he, timothy will take care of this responsibility from now on Right, so um, so we also need to be able to come to that place of trusting and delegating. Okay, um, so so there will come a time when the people whom we are uh, mentoring, the people whom we are, you know, uh, uh, teaching, uh, being an example to, they come to a place of maturity, like they come to a place of. Uh, um, uh, a place of being able to handle responsibilities, right? Um, so at that time, it is it is important that we that we give to delegate or deputize, right? Dep deputize meaning you know on behalf of us. Maybe initially it can be you know that they would they can be deputies or you know they they are ministering on your behalf you know it can be a short-term assignment you know where you need to go uh, and you send them instead of you know uh, you being there you know, in your place so you're deputizing them right then it can be a long-term thing where you're saying okay i'm i'm delegating this person i'm giving this this is big responsibility and it's also uh, it's also not for one day or two days, but it's it could be for life, right? Um, so that responsibility, that area of ministry, you know, just handing over to Timothy. Paul hands over to Timothy. So there's deputization and also delegating, or delegation. So, of course, we know that we can't uh, do it for a novice. Right, Paul writes, right? He says, uh, um, you know, in, in the same First Timothy chapter 3, he says, uh, where he's giving instructions, qualifications for overseers in churches and so on. So he's saying, you know, it should, that person should not be a novice. Novice means, you know, not a, you know, a, a relatively a new believer or someone who's inexperienced. Right. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 6 it says not a novice someone who is um, inexperienced or is a new uh, has, does not have enough knowledge maybe does not have enough experience so what will happen you know it says not a novice lest being puffed up with pride he fall into the same condemnation as the devil so he's saying you know we don't want to appoint novices so this, certainly so Paul has thought through this and and so also you know, we must do that. We must think through, okay, is, does that person have enough experience, enough learning, enough understanding? You know, is he able to make sound judgment, right? Um, has his character grown? And 
there will always be areas where they they need to grow into right they, there will always be areas where it's it's not fully mature they're not strong enough in certain areas but they will be right, in due course of time and and sometimes when they start handling things on their own and that's the time when they become strong in those areas because uh, they may be till now they always dependent on someone else maybe they were dependent on you to make those decisions uh, but now they need to make those decisions right uh, and so some of those areas which they they need to grow into that we felt that okay they have not grown into yet they will start growing right so delegate deputize okay positive recommendation so we see that uh, paul uh, doing this is is recommending timothy he's speaking highly of timothy uh, complimenting timothy uh, to others to other church leaders to other churches we see that there is positive recommendation. So um, we see that uh, uh, Paul does that. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 16 and verse uh, 10, we see this typically where he says, uh, and if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear, for he does the work of the Lord as I also do. Now the Corinthian church, you know, um, all kinds of believers there. The typical problem was that they were, uh, one one of the problems was that there was a lot of conflict, you know, people pulling in different directions, saying, I'm of Paul, I'm, a, I'm of Apollos, and so that, and all that. So, uh, but here, you know, he's saying, if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear. Okay, that's another area that he's addressing about Timothy. For he does the work of the Lord, as I also to right um and uh, same way in philippians 2 also he he writes about timothy when, he, when he's telling them um the the church in philippi about timothy right? philippians 2 and verse 19 i trust in the lord jesus to send timothy to you shortly that i also may be encouraged when i know your state that is so he's sending timothy to find out about the church um, for I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state, for all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. So, you know, certain things that we see, it says, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly. So I'm sending Timothy to you that I may be encouraged when I hear news of you. But look at verse 20, he says, I have no one like-minded. You know, I'm sending him in full faith, trusting his judgment, trusting what he will you know, bring to you. Right? I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state and who will care for you, who will minister to you. Uh, uh, I have no one like-minded, says. You know, at that point, there's no one like-minded who will um, who will sincerely care. Uh, for all seek their own, they're all selfish, they're all you know, seeking their own needs, etc. And uh, not mindful of the things of the Lord Jesus. But you know his proven character. You know his proven character. His character has been proven, which means that tested and proved. Right, over a period of time. So you know his proven character that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Then again, you know, we see the father-son kind of a relationship. As a son with the father, he served with me in the gospel. So so he he gives a positive recommendation about Timothy to the church in Philippine, right? He, to the believers, to the leaders there, and saying, I'm sending him to you. To the Corinthian church, same thing. I'm sending Timothy. Uh, he ministers just like I do. He serves the Lord just as I do. So you see that you take care of him, right? Okay. Then uh, we see that you know at at some point, as the ones who whom we are being a spiritual father to, a spiritual mother to, 
at some point we see that they become co-workers right so Romans 16 21 Timothy my fellow worker okay in 1 Thessalonians 3 um, it says um, verse 2 says Saint Timothy my brother and minister of God and fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ okay so three things he says to describe Timothy to introduce Timothy right to the church in Thessalonica so he's saying a brother fellow which means he's a fellow believer a minister of God and a fellow laborer he's our team or he's part of our team he's a team member he's a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ so I'm you know I, we sent him to you to establish you to comfort you etc right so he's a co-equal in ministry so no more uh, you know of course he's always you know somebody who, whom we can encourage the spiritual sons and daughters someone whom they can look up to we will always be someone whom they can look up to but we begin to consider them as co-equals like right? co-laborers in the lord Right, so they they come to that place of maturity. Okay, so that brings us to the end of um, uh, that brings us to the end of this course. Of course, uh, the notes we have some references wherever we have, uh, and if you want to do some extra study, you can you can do that as well. Uh, you know, this is typically about uh, cell group ministry. Um, so we see that uh, you know we we say that okay now that. All this information is there you know it, it just needs to translate into action right? if we the, the more we put into practice you know, maybe, maybe you lead a cell group uh, you see the lead uh, uh, you know uh, a small group ministry then learning is even better. and there's an opportunity to gives you an opportunity to put into practice all these things that you have learned and uh, you realize that the learning is you know, uh, uh, faster and then begin to understand a lot of things even as you face problems you know there will be uh, definitely challenges uh, and then even as you face as you whatever you've learned you try to address the challenges with what you learned then we realize that uh, okay the learning is faster okay so we've looked at um, cell group ministry we've gone through quite a bit of material so i just want to encourage us to go through it you know go through it use it use the material as a ready reckoner you know uh, as a as something that you can refer to every now and then um, about the kinds of cell group about the vision of the cell group uh, about uh, you know so it, it has you know like uh, just reminding us the has as those three sections one is about uh, the uh, the cell group ministry itself the vision the understanding uh, the, the the model of ministry the uh, you know the the uh, the specifics of it you know what you can do etc uh, and then the second section talking about the leader developing you know how how you can be a leader and the third thing is how we can raise up other leaders. So it's it's a very useful uh, material that you can go back to over and over again and try it out. Right? Okay. So we'll stop here. Um, if there are any questions, you can ask. Um, if there's anything at all. Otherwise, uh, no, we I think we'll stop here. Any questions? Any doubts? Um, based on what we looked at. Can be about discipleship it can be about the model of cell group ministry it can be about raising and being a, a, you know leaders ourselves um, and also about raising other leaders okay Aaron says no okay fine okay so we'll stop here right and then uh, okay Galatians I think the mid um, test is uh, there, paper is there for the online students I'm talking about. Uh, pretty soon we'll have uh, the other uh, question papers also. Um, and also about this course, we will have, you know, like we've already announced, there will be two uh, quizzes. 
and uh, and then both will be evaluated right okay okay then so we'll stop here thank you god bless we'll see you again bye bye